We want to build what we design, whether it be an interiors project or a building. And the way, the way to do that is to convey properly and with enthusiasm. So graphics is very integral to the program at University of Arizona. I assume it still is. It was when I was there. Um, and has uh, real meaning for what it is we do in, in our office. Important place is really where I grew up and all the way through high school. And it being the automotive capital at that time, as we're saying, um, most people that I knew had a parent or parents that worked for one of the auto companies. And in the uh, 60s and 70s, the big thing was the rollout of the new car designs. Every fall, usually if I have it right, September or October, they would showcase the new product. I had an uncle who worked for Look Magazine. Look Magazine was a big deal back then. There was life and look. In the Detroit area, you were buying a car every two years. That's just what you did. It was fashion. It was technology. There, there were um, constantly innovations coming into play. So being in, in the industry, whether because a car was provided to you as part of as a benefit for working for an auto company or you're just around it and keeping up with your neighbors every two years new car new cars everywhere not so much the case now but they also weren't built as well and they didn't last a whole lot longer than two years either it seemed like I was a little more interested in how the drawings looked than a lot of people around me I was also interested in content but it seemed to me that that if the content was made clear concise simple it would be more easily understood and, and the work could be carried out. So some of it on my own in high school and then that led me to choose a college that fostered that sort of thinking. And I chose University of Arizona and it was a good pick for me. And from the beginning, I was gonna look this up and I didn't get a chance, but I think we had six graphic classes that we had to take. So out of 10 semesters, five-year program, two semesters a year, um, almost every, you know, three quarters, nearly three quarters of the time, we were in a graphics class. And we, were, we were doing product design, we were doing um, posters, photography, all in the interest of conveying architectural product with the idea that good graphics advertising, good graphics can help you sell a building just like graphics help sell other consumer products. And to the extent that you're missing the, the capability to convey what it is you're designing, even a good design can go unbuilt because you can't convince your audience that it's the right thing. Conversely, someone with what might not be as good of of building design, but with some great abilities to convey and wow with graphics and, and realism um, has a, a better chance of, of getting their building built. The, the goal isn't always to build the building, but for me it is. I started in the, um, in the summer of 1980 in, at HOK in San Francisco and was working on drawings for a convention center in um, Anchorage, Alaska. Um, and they started having me build models and I built um, three models of a convention center for San Diego that actually was not built. And the models were built in conjunction with a model photographer pre-computer days again, all this is hand-drawn and the models are not cut by lasers, they're cut by hand. And so the model photographer directs the different scenes and the scales of the model and just what he needs to photograph it in such a way to bring the realism back. Um, and for um, what was a working wage of $12,500 a year in 1980, I gave my eyes to Gio Obata, the O in HOK. 
I never wore glasses until making those models for what was probably 12 hours a day for weeks on end. Um, but they were beautiful models. There's pictures of them around here I can show you. Uh, and then when it was completed at the end of that summer or into the fall, uh, they rented a car and I drove it from San Francisco to San Diego because he didn't want to trust a shipping company with, with that sort of thing. Um, but HOK was, was very um, presentation oriented. They, they got what I'm trying to describe as so important as the conveyance of, these, of, of the ideas. They would go to extraordinary um, to an extraordinary extent to have a glitzy presentation that would that would wow the, the client. The thing that that keeps me interested in, in what we're doing in this office and what I think drives a lot of people is the variety of work that we do. In a given day I can be working on a master plan for a project that might in, might encompass 40 or 50 acres in any number of buildings um, and working on a detail of how to hold up a granite countertop in a restroom. So the scale is pretty dramatic what we touch and that's the case for the junior people, the senior people, um, the intermediate people. We're all involved in, in a, um, a very large variety of scale. And I think that that's um, uh, a great thing to be able to say and a great thing to be able to work on that way. Uh, the, small, the small details help the big picture. The big picture helps the small details. It all seems to come together nicely. Our ideal project is um, ground up for a client, build a building, design the interior, work with them for several years, get to know the personalities, um, be able to be more successful with the project in knowing the audience that much better. Um, I do spend a lot of time looking at websites and, and going from site to site from whatever link gets you to the next site for whatever reason. Exposure to, um, to photography, woodworking, architecture, advertising. Um, all these things interest me for for color, for scale, for proportion, um, whatever whatever um, catches um, catches on is fine. Um, I think travel has become a bigger part of, of my inspiration in the last um, five or eight years. Because when I go different places, for whatever reason, uh, I find myself first in a more relaxed mode and able to take in the environment a little better than what's around me and taken for granted every day at home. Um, second, I'm always taking pictures. That didn't used to be the case and by taking pictures I'm paying more attention to what's around me. And third, being in a, in a uh, different environment uh, makes me want to go out and seek more than I do on my own turf. The aha moment really doesn't have too much to do with graphics or architecture. The aha moment for me um, goes back probably 16 or 17 years and it, I, in, in some ways I feel a little bit dumb because I think a lot of people pick this up right away but it took me a long time and it has to do with people's individual limitations and trying to, to, to get as, as a manager as a, as a um, company owner, trying to get the most out of people, but not to expect more than they're actually capable of delivering. Everyone has limitations and it's important to, to understand what those people's limitations are. Um, uh, the gal will remain nameless who, who this came about with, but um, I thought I was doing the right thing by, by pushing and then it, the aha, the golden moment occurred of the capability just isn't there. This isn't going to happen. So it's going gonna, it's gonna, to uh, make me uncomfortable that I can't see success by my definition. 
and it's going to and it's making this person obviously uncomfortable because she's not going to be able to achieve success by my definition. So that's that's my uh, that's that was my my big revelation to myself is you really need to work with people within their own limitations.